there. My name is Joanna Caris Corchet. I get it. Oh, hello there. My name is Joanna Caris Concepcion, aka. And I'm gonna be talking to you about the different kinds of awards for children and young adult literature. Let us search what are the different kinds of awards. After searching and searching and reading for many, many hours later, in conclusion, there's a lot. So I'm just gonna choose five children's awards and five young adults literature awards for both international and national. After searching and researching, let us go and travel internationally to these places where these medals and awards originated. Don't forget to bring your passport with you and always wear a face mask. Let's go! I'm up and ready to go to our first destination. Our objectives for today's lesson is to identify the awards given to children's and YA literature and its author and discuss the criteria of the award given to children's literature. Here are the five international awards that I will be talking about today. Welcome! to the US of A. Currently, I am quarantined. So without further ado, let me talk to you about the Children's Literature Awards. First off, we have the Newbery Medal. The Newbery Medal was actually named after the 18th century British bookseller, John Newbery, the father of children's literature. And it is awarded annually by the Association for Library Service to Children, a division of the American Library Association, to the author of the most distinguished contribution to American literature for children. So on June 22, 1921, Frederick G. Melker, or Melcher, I don't know how to pronounce his name, proposed the award so he's the guy who proposed that award to the american library association meeting of the children's librarians section and suggested that it be named for the 18th century english bookseller john newbury so the idea was enthusiastically accepted by the children's librarians and melker's official proposal was Approved by the ALA Executive Board in 1922. Yeah. In Melker's formal agreement with the board, the purpose of the Newbery Medal was stated as follows, and as I quote, to encourage original creative work in the field of books for children, to emphasize to the public that Contributions to the literature for children deserve similar recognition to poetry, plays, or novels. To give those librarians who make it their life work to serve children's reading interest an opportunity to encourage good writing in this field. The Newbery Award thus became the first children's book award in the world. In 1921, Frederick Melker had the Newbery Medal designed by Rene Paul Chambelan, Chambelan. Rene Paul Chambelan. The bronze medal has the winner's name and the date engraved on the back. The, the American Library Association Executive Board in 1922 delegated to the Children's Librarians section the responsibility for selecting the book to receive the Newbery Medal. The inscription on the Newbery Medal still reads Children's Librarian Section. Although the section has changed its name four times and its membership now includes both school and public library children's librarians in contrast to the years in 1922 to 58. 
when the section under three different names included only public library children's librarians, today the medal is administered by the Association for Library Services to Children, a division of AALA. Now let us proceed to the criteria. In identifying distinguished contribution to American literature defined as text in a book for children, A. Committee members need to consider the following. Interpretation of the theme or concept. Presentation of information including accuracy, clarity, and organization. Development of a plot. Delineation of characters. Delineation of a setting. Appropriateness of style. Note. Because the literary qualities to be considered will vary depending on content, the committee need not expect to find excellence in each of the named elements. The book should, however, have distinguished qualities in all of the elements pertinent to it. Letter B. Committee members must consider excellence of presentation for a child audience. Number 2. Each book is to be considered as a contribution to American literature. The committee is to make its decision primarily on the text. Other components of a book, such as illustrations, overall design of the book, etc., may be considered when they make the book less effective. 3. The book must be a self-contained entity, not dependent on other media such as sound or film equipment for its enjoyment. Note, the committee should keep in mind that the award is for literary quality and quality presentation for children. The award is not for didactic content or popularity. Moving on, let us proceed to the Carnegie Medal. Not Carnegie, but Carnegie. So the CILIP Carnegie Medal is awarded annually to a book for children and young people that creates an outstanding reading experience through writing. Medal holders include Arthur Ransom, C.S. Lewis, Neil Gaiman, Terry Pratchett, Philip Pullman, Sally Gardner, and Elizabeth Acevedo. The Carnegie Medal was established in 1936 in memory of the great Scottish-born philanthropist Andrew Carnegie. So Carnegie was a self-made industrialist who made his fortune in steel in the U.S. of A. His experience of using a library as a child led him to resolve that if ever wealth came to me, that it should be used to establish free libraries. Carnegie set up more than 2,800 libraries across the English-speaking world, and by the time of his death, over half the library authorities in Great Britain had Carnegie libraries. First awarded to Arthur Ransom for Pigeon Post, the winner receives a golden medal and 500 pounds worth of books to donate to a library of their choice. Since 2016, the winner of the Carnegie Medal has also been awarded the 5,000 pounds Colin Mears Award. Next, the CILIP Kate Greenaway Medal is the only prize in the UK to solely reward outstanding illustration in a children's book. It is awarded annually to a children's book illustrator whose artwork creates an outstanding reading experience. The Kate Greenaway Medal was established in 1955 for distinguished illustration in a book for children. It is named after the popular and highly influential 19th century artist known for her fine children's illustrations and designs. The winner receives a gold medal and 500 pounds worth of books to donate to a library of their choice. Since the year 2000, the winner of the Kate Greenway Medal has also been awarded the 5,000 pounds Colin Mears Award. Colin Mears a worthy 
Bayes-based accountant and children's book collector left a bequest, providing every Greenaway winner with a cash award as well as the coveted medal. Let's move on to the criteria. The book that wins the Carnegie Medal should be a book that creates an outstanding reading experience through writing. The whole work should provide pleasure, not merely from the surface enjoyment of a good read, but also the deeper subconscious satisfaction of having gone through a vicarious, but at the time of reading, a real experience that is retained afterwards. All criteria will not necessarily be relevant to every title nominated. Where appropriate, consider and assess the following. Starting off with plot, it asks these questions. Does the opening of the book make the reader want to read on? Why? Why not? How does the text achieve this? Does the narrative progress in a manner that is reasonable and convincing? Is the created world compelling and conceivable? Can the reader immerse themselves in it? Is the pace varied? Is there a sense of build-up to events? Is there anything the reader is not being told? Why might that be? Is the story told in an original way? Does it use a different format or category? Present characters in an interesting or unusual way or take a new perspective on an existing theme? If the plot is a retelling of a well-known story, a myth, a fairy tale, or an urban legend, are new elements added or changed enough so that the story feels new or reimagined? Is the plot well constructed? Does it make sense by the end however the events were ordered? Is the ending satisfying? Does it have a plausible if not happy conclusion? If the ending is ambiguous, does it challenge the reader to think? How does the ending contribute to the overall reading experience? Does it make a lasting impression on the reader? Does the plot take the reader on a journey? This might be a physical journey, or a metaphorical journey, or even both. What themes are presented and explored? How do these contribute to the overall theme of the book? Is the reader given the opportunity to work out how they feel about the theme or themes or are they led? If there is more than one theme, do they work together? Is there a consistency to the themes that have been chosen? Is due care and consideration given to each theme explored? How might the themes impact on the reader? This might mean challenging the reader's perspective or introducing the reader to a different point of view or helping the reader empathize with the character or situation. If the book covers difficult or challenging situations, can the reader understand why they have been handled in a certain way, even if this sometimes feels uncomfortable? Where themes of identity are explored, is this done in a way that promotes empathy and understanding? Consider that not every character needs to be sensitively drawn. Some characters may be deliberately intolerant. Are protected characters represented in the text? If so, is this carefully done? While there is no single correct way to represent these, there are ways that are outmoded, problematic, or tokenistic. Where cultural material is referenced or used, is it used with consideration for the respective cultures? Is it an appropriate, well-researched, respectful representation? Where factual information is used, historical dates, real events, cultural material, etc., is this accurate and clear? Does this book offer the reader new or unfamiliar ideas, experiences, or perspectives? Who is telling the story? Can the reader understand why this type of narrator has been chosen? How are the characters portrayed? Can the reader understand why the characters act, think, and speak the way they do, even if this changes throughout the book? Are the characters interesting and engaging, even if the reader might not like them? Are the characters and their motivations believable and convincing? Are they a true evocation of human experience? Do they feel real? Do the characters remain true to their origins, even if they grow and develop throughout the book? If stereotypes are used, why and how is this done? Are the characters developed with care and consideration that ensures the avoidance of prejudicial or problematic portrayals? Are the characters representative of varied backgrounds and experiences? If not, why not? 
Which character's voices does the reader hear from? Whose story or stories are being told? Whose stories are not being told? Why might this be? Is it a problem if some characters do not get heard? Could this be construed as an act of silencing? What might be inferred by the silence? Does this contribute to or reinforce existing societal inequality or discrimination? Is the dialogue, including inner dialogue, believable for each character? Is it consistent with the character and the experiences they go through? Do the characters interact convincingly? What impact do the characters have on the overall reading experience? How successful are the uses of generic techniques and conventions? Does the text make use of or challenge these techniques and conventions? Is there a relationship between the style and the subject matter or theme? Does the style work to enhance the theme and vice versa? How does the chosen category impact the storytelling and reading experience? How compelling is the language in conveying the setting, atmosphere, characters, action, etc? Is language used to persuade the reader of something? If so, what and why? Where rhyme or rhythm are used, is their use accomplished and imaginative? If read aloud, does it read well? Consider the use of the page layout and blank space. If figurative language is used, metaphors and similes, does it work to enhance or enrich the reading experience? If simple or plain language is used, is it executed with skill? Consider why simpler sentence structures or language is being used. Is simple language used while maintaining an immersive and rich reading experience? Does the book contain elements of innovation or experimentation in the way that it is written? For example, the category or genre or blending with genres, the use of language, etc. Does this add to the reading experience? Does the book stand up to rereading? Do you notice new aspects? Next, the Hans Christian Andersen Award. The Hans Christian Andersen Award is the highest international recognition given to an author and an illustrator to children's books. It's actually given every other year by IBBY. The Hans Christian Andersen Awards recognize lifelong achievement and are presented to an author and the illustrator whose complete works have made an important, lasting contribution to children's literature. The author's award has been given since 1956 and the illustrator's award since 1966. The award consists of a gold medal and a diploma presented at a festive ceremony during the biennial IBBY Congress. The patron of the Andersen Awards is Her Majesty Queen Margaret II of Denmark and the awards are sponsored by Nami Island Incorporation. Nominations for the Andersen Award are made by the national sections of IBBY. The award recipients are selected by a distinguished international jury of children's literature specialists. The criteria. So the selection criteria include the aesthetic and literary qualities of writing and illustrating as well as the ability to see things from the child's point of view and the ability to stretch the child's curiosity and imagination. imagination. Complete works of the author and of the illustrator will be taken into consideration. Moving on to the Caldecott Medal. The Caldecott Medal was named in honor of 19th century English illustrator Randolph Caldecott. It is awarded annually by the Association for Library Service to Children, a division of the American Library Association, to the artist of the most distinguished American picture book for children. Each year, the Newbery Medal is awarded by the American Library Association for the most distinguished American children, children's books published the previous year. 
However, as many persons became concerned that the artists creating picture books for children were as deserving of honor and encouragement as were the authors of children's books. So Frederick G. Melker, Melcher, him again, he suggested in 1937 the establishment of a second annual medal. So this medal is to be given to the artist who had created the most distinguished picture book of the year and named in honor of the 19th century English illustrator Randolph J. Caldicott. So the idea for this medal was also accepted enthusiastically by the section for library work with children of ALA and was approved by the ALA Executive Board. Hmm. The Caldicott Medal shall be awarded to the artist of the most distinguished American picture book for children published in the United States. During the preceding year, the award shall go to the artist who must be a citizen or resident of the United States, whether or not he be the author of the text. Members of the Newberry Medal Committee will serve as judges. If a book of the year is nominated for both the Newberry and Caldecott Awards, the committee shall decide under which heading it shall be voted upon, so that the same title shall not be considered on both ballots. From the beginning of the awarding of the Newberry and Caldecott medals, committees could, and usually did, cite other books as worthy of attention. Such books were referred to as Newberry or Caldecott runners-up. In 1971, the term runners-up was changed to honor books. The new terminology was made retroactive so that all former runners-up are now referred to as Newberry or Caldecott honor books. Criteria 1. In identifying a distinguished American picture book for children, defined as illustration, committee members need to consider 1. Excellence of execution in the artistic technique employed. 2. Excellence of pictorial interpretation of story, theme, or concept. 3. Appropriateness of style of illustration to the story, theme, or concept. 4. Delineation of plot, theme, characters, setting, mood, or information through the pictures. And 5. Excellence of presentation in recognition of a child audience. Number 2. The only limitation to graphic form is that the form must be one which may be used in a picture book. The book must be a self-contained entity, not dependent on other media like sound, film, or a computer program, for its enjoyment. And the last, each book is to be considered as a picture book. The committee is to make its decision primarily on the illustration, but other components of a book are to be considered, especially when they make a book less effective as a children's picture book. Such other components might include the written text, the overall design of the book, etc. On to the last award for this report of mine in the international scene, we have the Mildred L. Bachelder Award, aka the Bachelder Award, and is awarded to a United States publisher for a children's book considered to be the most outstanding of those books originating in a country other than the United States and in a language other than in English and subsequently translated into English for publications in the United States during the preceding year. So this award honors Mildred L. Bachelder. She is a former executive director of the Association for Library Service to Children, a believer in the importance of good books for children in translation from all parts of the world. She began her career working at Omaha Public Library, then as a children's librarian at St. Cloud in Minnesota, State Teachers College, and subsequently as librarian of Haven Elementary School in Evanston, Illinois. She eventually joined the ranks of the American Library Association in 1936. But Childer spent 30 years with ALA working as an ambassador to the world on behalf of children and books, encouraging and promoting the translation of the world's best children's literature. 
Her life's work was to eliminate barriers to understanding between people of different cultures, races, nations, and languages. According to Mildred L. Bachelder, children in all countries should have good books in translation from many parts of the world for these reasons. Children of one country who come to know the books and stories of many countries have made a beginning toward international understanding. Knowing the classic stories of a country creates an attitude for understanding towards the people for whom that literature is a heritage. Children who know they are reading in translation in the same stories which children in the other parts of the countries or other countries are reading, they develop a sense of nearness with those in other lands. And the last one, interchange of children's books between countries through translation enhances communication between the peoples of those countries. And if the books chosen for traveling from language to language are worthy books, the resulting communication is deeper richer, more sympathetic, and more enduring. So this award, established in her honor in 1966, is a citation awarded to a United States publisher for a children's book considered to be the most outstanding. Right? That's what I said a while ago. Of those books originating in a country other than the United States and in a language other than English and subsequently translated into English for publication in the United States during the preceding year. ALSC gives the award to encourage U.S. publishers to seek out superior children's books abroad and to promote communication among the peoples of the world. As of 1979, the award has been given annually to a publisher for a book published in the preceding year. Before 1979, there was a lapse of two years between the original publication date and the award date. It's to convert to the new system. Two awards were announced in 1979, one for 1978 and one for 1979. So beginning in 1994, honor recipients were selected and announced as well. In a year that the committee is of the opinion that no book of that year is worthy of the award, so none is given. The award is decided on and announced at the midwinter meeting of ALA and the winning publisher receives a citation and commemorative plaque. So the presentation used to be made on April 2, International Children's Book Day but is now given at the ALA annual conference held each summer. <sighs> yeah, girl is back home because we're gonna talk about the national ones this time. Oh. Mabuhay, we are back here in the national and we're back here in the Philippines and I'm gonna be talking to you about the National Children's Literature Awards Award. There's only one that I found and this is called the National Children's Book Awards. So this award aims to encourage parents and caregivers to spend more time reading with their children while recommending the best published works. The NCBA is also co-administered with the National Book Development Board or the NBDB and the Philippine Board on Books for Young People or the PBBY. So the PBBY is a private non-stock, non-profit organization committed to the development of children's literature in the Philippines. The NCBA is judged by a panel of award-winning children's book authors, illustrators, and scholars. They didn't have any criteria posted, but only the nominees or the nom call for nominations. So that's about it for the children's literature awards. Tune in next time to the Young Adult Literature Awards. Bye!